Hey everybody, I hope and pray that you're doing well today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is embezzle. Embezzle. Now you may be following along. You say, well, wait a minute. We're in the book of Haggai. I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about embezzling. Didn't see anybody stealing any money. But let me give you the definition of embezzle. It says to appropriate fraudulently to one's own use as money or property entrusted to one's care. Now, if you stop and take that definition and you realize that what you have has been entrusted to you by God, then if you're using it inappropriately, then you are embezzling God's money. That's not something we like to think about. Uh, any of us, right? Anytime we get to talking about money, I mean, you start clenching on to that wallet and holding on to that checkbook. I know uh, there's been plenty of things come up here recently. I've had the exact same thought. It's like, oh my goodness, it seems like it's just flying out of my hands. But here's, here's the thing. As it, as it goes to the context in the book of Haggai, as now that the... the uh, after those who had been exiled, as they have come back, now you have the prophet Haggai that's that's coming from, uh, he's getting this word from the Lord. He, he's really only uh, dealing with a few months, as you see. This is only two chapters. It's a very uh, easy and quick read, so you can kind of see the whole picture. But he's telling the people, hey, there's something wrong here. Uh, you've come back, and the temple is still not rebuilt. It's almost like, what's the hold up? Now, to know a little history that uh, they had started building uh, the temple, but now it has been just sitting there for many years and not yet completed. And it really had to do a lot with the Samaritans and some, uh, or mostly Samaritans, some influence there and opposition that kept them from building. But now Haggai is saying, look, it's time to do the right thing. And so let's look today in Haggai chapter 1, verses 2 through 11. Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, This people says, The time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses, and this temple to lie in ruins? Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. You have sown much, and bring in little. You eat, but do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build the temple that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. You looked for much, but indeed it came to little. And when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why, says the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is in ruins, while every one of you runs to his own house. Therefore the heavens above you withhold the dew, and the earth withholds its fruit. For I called for a drought on the land and the mountains, on the grain and the new wine and the oil, on whatever the ground brings forth on men and livestock, and on all the labor of your hands. Now, I know there I read more than I typically do, but I want you to see the whole context of everything that he's saying. He is saying, Haggai is, is, is giving the word from the Lord. He says, wait a minute, you people are saying that, well, it's it's not quite the right time to rebuild the Lord's house. It, you know, it's when we had this opposition, and I mean, money is tight, and, and, and let's just wait you can almost hear it like today, right? Let's just wait until a better time of the economy. Let's just wait till things pick back up. Now, what the Lord says after that makes it clear. Now, you can make arguments and we can make excuses all day long. The context here is very clear because the Lord says, I'm going to tell you why you don't have the money. And it's because you took everything that I had given you, you used it to build your own houses while you let the Lord's house go remain in ruins. That's what he says when he's talking about your paneled houses. I think sometimes maybe, and some, some people believe that's really talking about fancy houses and everything else. It probably, uh, this is just 
my take on it as well, is that it's probably just more the fact that their houses were completed and the Lord's house was not. Even as they had been blessed, you, you take this and go back and read the book of Ezra. You can see a lot of the um, the timeline that's going on here. And you can see that they had an opportunity. They had materials. And it's almost as if they took those materials that should have been used for the house of God and used them for their own houses. It, it, it's the same thought that even if it's not material, it was with the money. Right. With the finances. And I mean, the same thing that that we today. Right. What, what's your first priority to fix your own house or to fix the Lord's house? And I know right now you say, well, wait a minute, that's a different time. The, the temple was was a, a picture and it was actually the place where the presence of God dwelt. And now, hey, hey, preacher, we're on this side of the empty tomb, this side of Pentecost and and the cross and uh the cross, the empty tomb, and uh, the day of Pentecost where the Spirit came down. And now the church is the body. And so now that that's it. We don't have to worry about it. Well, if we really believe that, right? Even, let's, let's be honest. We're talking about the spiritual house of God now, not the physical house of God. Okay, well then what work are you putting in? What, what resources are you putting in to rebuild and build up and strengthen the spiritual house of God? Many, many a commentator and many an old preacher will tell you, if the house of God, if the material house of God is falling apart, then the people of God within the house are falling apart too. And I'm going to tell you, we've got to make sure that we're making a priority. Here's the bottom line. To put God first. What do we find in the New Testament? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And then all these things shall be added unto you. Today, let's not embezzle what God has blessed us with. Let's use it to build up a kingdom for him that he can be, that he can be proud of. That he can be glorified in. Then... We will find out that the blessings we receive will be better than any we ever could have purchased for ourselves. God bless you, and I pray you have a great, great day.